Okay, so right now, um, there's more reason to believe that the faster something moves in the universe and the more energy it burns off, the more energy it's also creating, if not faster, because of how it's uh, self-replenishing itself in the universe and beyond. And I think it's really interesting because it really just goes to show you like all the stuff that we don't see happening before our eyes is just how big and infinite the universe really is and beyond. And so because of that, that actually is proof that there has to be things out there that are faster than the speed of light and and not just distance, but you know, it really just goes to show you how much we don't know about even the world around us because of how much time and acceleration forces that seem to penetrate everything else. And I just think that's really cool because you know, it seems like there are very small objects out there that are still waiting to be discovered that uh, could be even smaller than Planck, for example. And like they can travel very fast in the universe too. If not, uh, if not, then, you know, there could be very fast objects out there like big stars and all that that are even bigger than Stephenson 2-18. And just like, you know, where those could lead us to would be very interesting too to find out. But it's interesting though because for something like the speed of light, the speed of light is like 186,000 miles rounded. But it very well could be even, um, but 300,000 kilometers would probably be easier to remember. I still do think, though, that uh, there are things out there that are faster than the speed of light because light itself eventually kind of phases out and that light will just uh, warm whatever distance it travels to. I mean, so more energy gets created, it turns into radiation, and then eventually that radiation, whether it's the pattern itself, the cycle, will eventually turn into something else as a different type of energy whatever that energy is and where it's at in the universe and what it decides to do next. I guess it really depends because it really just goes to show you can get different results even in the electromagnetic um, uh, spectrum. So depending on what kind of radiation we're dealing with, it can also very well make a big difference like what, we're, what results you're going to get and what it means in the end too because then we can really see just how different the uh, universe really has become and what different uh, types of matter or different types of uh, reactions we can get, like different subatomic particles or formulas and things that could just move all around and what it could evolve into. Hence the, uh, the terminology that there's just a lot waiting to be discovered, like Carl Sagan would always use to say too. But if we're to believe all that too, it really does make us think though, like, you know, how many... How, how many other uh, forms of matter have we not discovered yet that could be out there too? Or how many other ions or subatomic formulas we haven't discovered and uh, they're just fit, like nuclear fusions and fissions where they're creating new things and then they replenish some other, you know, uh, formula that's just hanging around in the universe somewhere, wherever that is. Because it, it's interesting to think about, you know. But if it's happening so fast... It's proof that the universe is infinite, and it's proof that the universe has to be, like, instead of finite, because it's all right in front of us then. Therefore, it, it's just proof that it's going to turn into something else. It has to at some point, because of just how much we don't know and how much we're underestimating with what we don't see right in front of us. So like, on maybe an infinite number of dimensions is another good way to look at it, where, like, you know, we might think we just live in the third dimension, and we think, oh, yeah, the third dimension's infinite. But then, you know, you start thinking, like, well, where's the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth dimension, for example? And now, all of a sudden, you, you start having more possibilities to think about and how much that would make sense, you know? So it's like, the, fur the, the further the dimensions go, it's, like, just more, like, math that's involved, more complexity of it. And uh, that's what it turns out to. So I, I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, there's so much we still can't comprehend, even let alone what we've already known within like, you know, 93 billion light years, for example. Kind of really does make you think, you know, what we don't see, but it's all thanks to the possibility that everything's moving so fast and even faster than we previously thought. Because there's just, again, mathematically, we just, there's just some stuff that we haven't compared it to and we don't really know everything. So, something to think about.